Wizards of the Coast surprised us all by dropping their newest commander set. It's going to be a commander master set and it's exorbitantly highly priced. So what are the reprints that they're going to give us in this set to make sure that we cough up the money for it? The prices for this set is absolutely insane at the moment. But then again, wizards are going to go hard on the reprints. So let's get straight to those reprints. Wizards are not playing around. The first card that they hit us with was Jewel Lotus. And not only in a regular version, but also in a very nice new frame break version. That's the one on your right. And that is a really beautiful card. They also gave us Ur Dragon. And we might see the rest of the Eminence cycle, but let's get into that later. And last but definitely not least, they are unleashing the power of Palm Three Kingdoms with another Three Kingdoms card, which is going to be the capture of Jinzu. You can also have a look at the booster box art and the pack art, because that is going to reveal the next three cards that we know will feature in this set. First up is our janky mythic. You know we have to have a few of them. That's going to be Ghoul Caller Giza. She's featured here on the draft booster. On our collector booster pack, we see Sakuma, which is one of the dinosaurs from Ixaland, where we coincidentally will also be getting back to later this year. And last but not least, let's have a look at this art. This is no doubt Addison, our angel, our very powerful angel card. And these are the cards, our six cards, that we know will appear in this set. But we have some very interesting guesses for you. If you are getting value out of this video, please consider liking, subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Thank you. When wizards are considering making master products, they are going to go hard on the reprints. And we know that there has been other master products. So if you take away all the master products that has been, and you look at what cards are valuable, then you're going to see that wizards are, are targeting cards that are around 20 to 50 plus euros. And if you know that, you also know that wizards are going to reprint cards around every fifth year. Maybe even more if the card is popular, but around five years seems to be some kind of interval in which wizards are considering making a reprint of great cards. So knowing this, if you take a look at Eternal Masters from 2016, and Double Masters from 2020. You can see that a lot of these cards have been reprinted lately into Double Masters 2022. So we are probably not going to see these cards again. And if you take a look at the Eternal Masters, you can see that a lot of the cards from Eternal Masters has recently been printed in Dominaria Remastered. So we are not going to see the Tutor Cycle and we are not going to see Force of Will again, I believe. So what cards could we actually be seeing? Well, a bit of a tip if you're new to Magic the Gathering and these Master Sets is there seems to be some sort of correlation between what has been reprinted in old Master Sets and what hasn't had a reprint for a while but used to be in some of the older Master Sets. So for instance, if you have a look at Great Henge, this card is definitely overdue in terms of the value that it has right now and where Wizards likes to have their cards. So probably we're going to see a reprint of the Great Henge in Commander Masters. We know that we're getting the Jeweled Lotus because that card is expensive. Another banger we could see because it's highly overdue to a reprint is Mana Crypt. That card is insanely valuable at the moment and was last reprinted in, in Eternal Masters. In Eternal Masters, if you go compare that list to Dominaria Remastered, you can see that there's a lot of cards from Eternal Masters. So I think a great guess would be Mana Crypt. Something else we could see is Caracas, the land, or maybe a reprint of the good old faithful Wasteland. These are some of the cards that we might speculate could be in this set. We could also see Max Opal. I think that is also a good guess. Or Bright Steel Colossus, because these artifacts would interact really well with cards from the Brothers War. Another card I believe we're going to see in Commander Masters is Doubling Season. Doubling Season was printed in Double Masters and was printed in Battle Bond. And this card is around 50 euros, so it's highly overdue for a reprint. And also, it interacts really well with all the Phyrexian cards we have gotten. Could you imagine playing a Lishnon Mother Machines together with Doubling Season? Yeah, exactly. The set is not going to be standard legal as most master sets aren't standard legal, but it is, however, going to be draftable. So you're going to be able to grab three draft packs that each have 20 cards in them and then make yourself a 60 card commander deck. We do have more information about the different booster boxes. I'm just gonna put it up for you right now. Your draft booster box is going to have 24 packs, the same with your set booster box and the collector booster pack. Hold on to your horses, just like Double Masters 2022 is only going to have 
four packs. Yep, you heard it right, only four packs. But if you remember back to Double Masters 2022, it actually turned out that the four pack collector booster had more value and was definitely a better buy than the draft booster. It's going to be very exciting and we will be following it here on the channel to see if it's the same thing this time around. So we are excited about this set. We think it has the potential to be really great depending on what Wizards of the Coast are going to do with it. What is not so great is the price point at the moment. The prices are insane. I, I'm, I'm actually flabbergasted. I'm, I'm in shock. I can't see what they're trying to accomplish with these exorbitant high prices. Rudy from Alpha Investments has speculated that Wizards of the Coast are going to lower the print run, but raising the prices. By doing this, they're going to get the same revenue, but they're going to be able to control the prices on the secondary market in a much higher degree because they are controlling the print run. In the long run, I think that the consumer, the player is actually going to get hit from this maneuver because we are going to see a lot of rare cards. We're going to see actually the same number of rare cards. Even though the print run has been lowered, we're going to see more rares in the packs. And this means that the number of available cards on the secondary market is going to remain the same, but you're going to pay a much higher entry price to get the cards. While Wizards get to reduce their cost of cardboard, shipping, packaging, all of this stuff. So I don't think I agree with the pricing right now. I didn't before, but this is completely out of the question. Who is actually going to pay this price for a few packs? I think they're going to have to lower the price. And we should say these are pre-release pricings and we picked them up from Amazon and they might still come down to a more reasonable level when we see the real pricing a bit closer to release date. So if you haven't already clicked off this video and you're still watching, thank you so much. And I just wanted to let you know that we are not on Patreon. We're not supported or sponsored by anyone and we want it to remain that way. And one of the ways that we're able to do so is that we've printed up our own little play mat. Have a look at it here. If you're interested, it's 25 USD and you can get it without and with the printing for Flesh and Blood. If you're interested in supporting us, you should know that anything that we get out of this sale will be used for either equipment or for giveaways for the channel. And we would truly appreciate it. Write us at this email if you're interested in buying one of our playmats. Thank you so much for helping our channel grow.